Good evening. This is Dr. Timothy Emmerich with Harvest Evangelistic Association. I want to invite you once again to study the Word of God with me, so please get your Bibles. Hopefully you'll be able to hear uh, the um, video a lot better. We're able to buy a microphone and head um, headphones, and um, these are actually my wife's, but I'm waiting for uh, the other pair coming on Monday. So let's grab our Bible and let's get started. This week we're going to be talking about thinking, speaking, and believing. Thinking, speaking, and believing. Now this is a very important topic because I have a lot of people as a psychologist, a counselor, uh, come to me where they have real twisted thinking. And because they have real twisted thinking, their, their speech is following that and the way they are living and believing is following that as well. So there is right and wrong thinking and we need to understand that all these must come together in order for us to walk in the victory that God has given us. Um, the battle, it, it talks about that we need to resist the devil. And the devil, the first thing he attacks is our mind, our five senses. And um, I have uh, a lot of different teachings on that, the battle of the mind, um, think on purpose, things like that, that help us understand um, how we need to think. So uh, if we think like God wants us to think, the way God thinks, then we are going to talk like that and we're going to act like that. Faith... Um, and love and all these areas that we're talking about um, are a muscle and, they're, and, and they grow as we act on the word of God. You've got to remember that. So uh, again, we are told to resist the devil, but again, it starts in our mind. That's where the devil attacks you. Even before you put your feet on the ground, the devil will be hitting you with very negative thoughts. Thoughts about everything. Have you ever had a chance to uh, sit down and try to read the Bible and pray, and uh, all kinds of all kinds of garbage comes into your head? Well, it's not God because He wants you to pray. It's not you because you're there with your Bible open, and you want to pray and read the Word of God. So where does it come from? It comes from the enemy. That's why I, I suggest reading, listening to, excuse me, the Battle of the Mind, as well as uh, Think on Purpose, and and these tapes you can listen to them time and time and time again and please again also make sure that you're sending them to family and friends so people can understand what they're up against if we had uh, spiritual eyes the lord would open up the spirit world for us we would see a tremendous battle going on right now between good and evil everything that's going on in the world is between good and evil. And we turn on the news, it's all evil. We don't see anything good. They don't talk about anything that God is doing. They only talk about all the different things that are going on in the world, the pestilence and the disease and the crime. And, and of course, it puts people at wit's ends because they don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. And I'm not talking about just people who don't know the Lord. I'm talking about people who know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know how many Christians I counsel that do not put the word of God into action. They think wrong, they speak wrong, and they live wrong. And they're Christians. And this is a shame because the Lord God has given us his word to know how he thinks, to know how he acts. When we look at Jesus acting, we see him imitating God the Father. He said, I have not come to do my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. So when we see Jesus working, Jesus talking, Jesus moving throughout the Gospels, um, we see the will of the Father, the love of the Father, the, the, the uh, anticipation that the Father has to bring people to himself through Christ Jesus. Now, there are two sides uh, to this whole thing that we need to understand. There's a legal side that God has done, has taken care of in Scripture, and, uh, and that uh, legal side is in the mind and the actions of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when uh, a person comes to Christ uh, as, a, as a sinner, when, when a person as a sinner comes to Christ and receives Jesus and is born again, Jesus is not being crucified again. Jesus uh, came, died, buried, went to hell, 
uh, and, and resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father one time. It's the same thing as healing. It says, by his stripes we have been healed. Every time a person receives the healing that was done, the redemptive work that was done on the cross of Calvary, then they are receiving what was done. God is not going to be doing anything new. Everything that God did was done through Christ Jesus. And when Christ ascended, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And the reason why he sat down, because his work, his redemptive work, was done and he gave all authority to the church to you and me church believers all authority to us to move on his behalf he said he's given us his name he's given us the power of his holy spirit and if we don't move uh, the the will of god and the and the mercy of god uh, will not be demonstrated in the world we are the hands of god the love of god we are the eyes of god we are the the, the mouth of god preaching the good news to people who are captive people are captive by fear you know how many people i counsel and messages that i receive that they're bound by fear and god has not given us a, a, a spirit of fear but of power of love and self-control the other side is uh, we have the legal side of God, what he has done, then we have the experimental side, our, how, what we need to experience in our daily lives. And if that is out of balance, if we only preach the legal side of God, what he has done, without the experimental part, or uh, how we experience that, then we have a dead, cold person or church. If we only preach the, the experience side, then we have fanaticism. So we need both sides to balance out uh, our, our journey with the Lord God. Now, um, God said by thinking and speaking and living that his promises that he has made, we will have victory. I guarantee you, if you change around the way you think and change around the way you speak and change around, that will change the way you're living and you'll have a more positive, fruitful, powerful life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, when there is not balance, like I said, it produces nothing more than, than um, fanaticism and an unresponsiveness by people. So this is why I want to take the time to talk about thinking, speaking, and believing. Now, we must understand that we are a spirit that lives in a body, and we have a soul, which is our mind, our intellect, our personality. Our spirit is born again. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, our spirit is born again. Our body right? We, we can walk in a lot of the, the promises that the, the Lord God has given us by faith and, and have divine healing taking place as we accept it, but we must understand that in progressive sanctification, we must uh, renew our mind, and Paul says that in Romans 12 too, we'll get to that. We must renew the way we speak, the way we live. That's called progressive sanctification. And this is very important because a lot of Christians think God's going to do it all. Well, God can't do everything. God can't do everything. People say, well, how in the world can you say that? Well, it said Jesus Christ, within, uh, when he was preaching in his own town, could do no mighty works. He could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. You see, uh, a lot of people think, well, just pray uh, that the Holy Ghost will minister to people, the lost and things like that. And you're not going to find that in Scripture. It says that we need to preach the word of God. If the Holy Ghost is going to do everything, then why do we train missionaries? Why do we train pastors and teachers? Because the Lord God has given us, the church, the homework to do his work on earth. We are his eyes, his mouth, his hands, and his feet. And if we don't do it, it's not going to get done. And that's what we must understand. That's why God gave all authority to the church in the name of Jesus to do his work. Okay? Now, right and wrong thinking and speaking, believing um, is very important because whatever you think and whatever you speak is how you're going to live. Either be positive or negative, the word of God or what Satan is putting in your head. Whatever you're thinking and speaking, this is how you're going to live. This is how you're going to act. And that's why it's very important to redo this, this mind. So um, we must understand that uh, we have to stand our ground. We have to stand our ground. It says in James uh, 1, 6, and 7 that uh, let him or her ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a surf of the sea driven back and forth by the winds. For that person must not suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord. Got another teaching called double-minded. I really suggest you should listen to that teaching. Now, we must understand that to renew our minds, 
uh, will affect our entire being, the way we live, the way we talk. Now, it says in Proverbs 23, 7, Proverbs 23, 7, for as a person thinks within himself, so is he. So if you're thinking uh, defeatism, you're defeated before you even start. There's a lot of people that, that see themselves in a very poor light when they're looking in the mirror and they're looking at uh, the things that are going on and they're listening to all the, the bad things that were spoken over them. They, they feel defeated. They feel like they can't do anything. And God says we can do all things through him that strengthens us, all things. Didn't say some things. Didn't say just on Sunday. It said all things. And all things to me, what the Bible means, is all things. So as we walk in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand that the Lord is there, the Lord loves us, he has given us the power of his Holy Spirit to go about doing good, we're anointed with the Holy Spirit, we shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover, we shall cast out demons and we shall speak in new tongues. This is the mandate for the church. This is what God wants. This is why the, God, the Lord God said, go to the upper room, wait, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power and authority to carry out his word. Now, um, there's another scripture in Romans 12, 1 and 2 I like to use a lot. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to the church. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That means your mind, your eyes, your mouth, your hands, your feet, uh, who you are, what you are. Present that to God. Say, God, I am here. I am a willing vessel to, for you to use. And it says here, which is holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service for what God has done for us, we should be more than willing to do the work of God. That's what it's saying here. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We live in a very evil world. The God of this world is Satan. And he manipulates the media and politics and, and people and he whispers in people's ears and, and, and causes wars and assassinations and causes all kinds of different things that are going on in the world. And people are, are misunderstanding what's going on and they think it's racial. and It's good and evil. It's good and evil. There's good and bad in every race. And we need to understand that by transform, trans, transforming our minds that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son God so loved the world everybody in the world and there's people hurting people are scared people don't know how to fight and our ability and, and our and our power that we receive from God we need to educate people and help them it says by the renewing of your mind that you may understand prove what is good what you're thinking is good as we compare it to the word of God and acceptable to God and the, the mature will of God, what God wants us to be as mature people. So as we renew our mind, we're presenting every situation, every situation to God and say, God, I'm not going to act the way I want to act. Um, I'm going to act the way you want me to act. And the only way you're going to know that is listening to the Holy Spirit and confirming it in the word. See, God is not a hater. Satan is a hater. God's a lover. And we are children of a loving God. And so we have love, and we can love. We must exercise love. Now here's a very important scripture that I want you to uh, really listen to. And it's in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Okay? It says, Though we walk in the flesh in our body, we do not war after the flesh. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, pulling down strongholds. There are many strongholds that are out in the world that Satan has developed over cities, uh, you know, pornography and, and violence and things like that, strongholds that through the word of God, the transforming word of God, as we are uh, coming into a situation, we need to understand that there are strongholds, but we must be alert and alive and understand that, that these strongholds can be pulled down. It says, uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Where's the knowledge of God? In the Word of God. As you study the Word of God, you will know more about God. As you study the Word of God, you will know how Jesus acted in every situation. So when any comes to you in your mind, and he starts bringing terrible imaginations, terrible dreams, terrible things that are going on in your life, and things like, do you really believe? He puts doubt in your mind. 
He, he doesn't want you to understand that the word of God is true, alive, and powerful. So he puts doubt. So what we must do, it's, it's here, we must bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bring in captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing in captivity every thought. Well, how do we do that? Well, when we hear a negative thought, something that's contradicting the word of God, we say, no, Satan, I resist you. I will not think like that. And I will speak the promise of God. When people are haters, and there's a lot of haters out there that you know hate God and hate the people of God, but our, our you know, responsibility is to love them. So when we have a hater who are equal, equal opportunity haters, they hate everybody, don't feel special, they're not just attacking you, and especially in this environment with everything that's going on with disease and all this other stuff, people are running scared. People don't know what to do. Can you imagine living in this world controlled by Satan and not even understanding that it is controlled by Satan and not understanding how you can resist Satan? And the first thing is here in the mind, capturing those thoughts and bringing it to what the Lord God says in his word. It says, having in a readiness to revenge disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, when you attack doubt, when you, see, it says in scripture, what is ever not of faith is sin. So when you attack doubt, when you attack those things that come to your mind that are obviously of Satan, and you attack them readily, you learn to understand, you learn to hear um, what's God saying to you, and you understand what Satan is saying. Because Satan, again, will attack you in your mind. That's where it is. That's where you must renew your mind. And everybody must renew their mind. You know, I've been walking with the Lord for 49 years, and that does not mean that I am not attacked by Satan. Every day, multiple times during the day. And I can, you know, get uh, uh, angry and upset and and uh, fearful, and how can you talk about me like that? I've been criticized by experts. But I understand that people, again, that don't know God, that don't know the love of God, and I'm talking about Christians as well, because just because you go to church on Sunday, um, you know, and put a nickel in a basket, does not make you born again. You know, when I talk to people, I say, well, you know, uh, are you born again? Well, I go to such and such church. I said, I didn't ask you that. Are you born again? Well, I was baptized. I didn't ask you that. Do you have a personal relationship with God? Have you given the control of your life? The Lord says, why do you call me Lord and do not what I say? A lot of people say, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, help me, help me, help me. But you see, if we look at our country, we've gotten God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, out of our schools, out of our courts. We can't even mention God because people come at us and attack us saying that we're being bigoted and those type of things. And it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with our strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and understanding what he has done for us on the cross of Calvary and acting in love. We're not to be arrogant, but we're acting in love. And that love begins here in the mind. How you think is how you will speak. And how you speak is how you will live. So it says in another version, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, the true knowledge of God, which is the word of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience by ready to punish every act of disobedience when your own obedience is complete. So the way we fight the good fight of faith in our mind is that when we keep captives these thoughts and say, no, I will not believe like this. I will not talk like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the exact opposite. What the Word of God says, Satan, I'm going to tell you the exact opposite. The Lord God said it to Satan and the temptation, and he spoke the Word of God, Rhema, as we need to speak the, Lord of God, the Word of God, Rhema. Okay, the written word is Logos. When we speak the Word of God, we're speaking power. We're speaking power. We're speaking victory when we speak in faith. Let me talk a little bit about the power of our words. Now, I have another video talking about the power of the words. So look into the videos. Get off the TV, get off the news. You know, when you're driving to work, you're washing the dish, whatever you do, put on a video, listen to it. Have your Bible there. Write them down, write the scriptures down. 
Pray, read, meditate upon the word of God. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. As you renew your mind, and as you bring every thought into the obedience of what Christ has said, you're going to be able to renew our mouths, or the way we talk. Now, I say that speech is very important because words are locators of either faith or doubt. You listen to a person, either they have faith or doubt. A lot of people are running scared, oh, the, the, this thing and this thing and the pestilence and things that are going on. Well, <laughs> you know, it's always been like that. But the Lord God says, nothing shall harm you. We are more than conquerors in everything, see? And a lot of people that are falling sick and doing different things, it's because their lack of faith in their lives. They, they don't fight the good fight of faith. You know, I, I, people want healings for different things, right? But I tell them, if you can't overcome and receive the healing for your migraines, how are you going to overcome when Satan hits you with cancer? And they look at me very surprised. But it's true. If you can't overcome in the little things, right, and you fall apart with the little things, can you imagine if you receive from the doctor a word of, of, of uh, uh, tragic news that uh, uh, you have cancer or something like that? See, if you can't resist the devil and use the word of God for migraines or a cold or, or you know, a flu or whatever that, how are you going to resist the devil for something more serious? Because all disease... All pestilence does not come from God. It comes from Satan. Jesus Christ went about doing good, healing all those, healing all those, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Did not say God. It says uh, that um, we need to make a continual effort to confess the word of God every day, every minute, every time the devil, the devil hits you with negative thoughts. Remember this. And very important, I would write this down if I was you. Every thought, either positive or negative, that is not spoken, dies unborn. Let me say that again. Every thought that comes into your mind, positive or negative, faith or doubt, okay, that comes into your mind, if you don't speak it, it dies unborn. It just sits there. Okay? So when you hear or you speak the word of God, you're giving life to a situation. Lord God said, my words are life and health to all flesh. You got to speak it. You got to speak the word of God. Um, it says in um, Proverbs 18, 21, listen to this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. So what you're speaking is what you're living. And what you're speaking is what you're thinking. So if you're thinking you know, the word of God, the strong, positive word of God, that's what you'll be speaking and that's what you'll be living. But if you're always doubting and always fretting and, and, and what am I going to do? What about this? And what if? Right? Well, that's what you're going to live. And, and that's how you're going to live. You're going to live a, a very destructive life. You know, sometimes people come to me and I start talking about, you know, Jesus as Savior. I start talking about how they can have a victorious life. And they say, well, don't, don't change me. You know, don't, don't take all this time to change me. Well, I'm saying, well, if you are so uh, doing so good the way you are, why are you coming to me? If everything is working for you and your life is, uh, you know, all together, why are you coming to me as a, as a psychologist to try to help you? I know that psychologists, uh, psychology will help me identify uh, a situation or a problem, but it's only Jesus that can take care of it. Only Jesus can heal it. So we must understand there are certain laws that God has established, like the law of gravity. I don't care how much faith you have, you jump off a roof, and you're going to fall and you're going to hit that floor, and you know you might break something or even die. It's a law. And God has said in his word that life and death are in the power of your tongue. You can create heaven or you can create hell in your home, on your job, with other people, with people that you meet, uh, ministering to. You know, like I said, I, I minister to a lot of different people in a lot of different situations. I minister in classrooms, I minister in prisons, and uh, I'm teaching a variety of subjects, both sacred and, and secular. But I understand that I can walk into that classroom and be a real jerk and talk terrible things and put people down and be arrogant, which I have seen and experienced many times. 
or I can come in there and be a blessing. <coughs> I tell these guys when I'm in prison, I'm here to bring hope because hope deferred makes a heart sad. So what does that mean? They have no hope. They've been down 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, they did some bad things, and, but a lot of them have changed. St. Paul did a lot of bad things. He killed the early church. Many people in the church. He was at the, the death of uh, Stephen. And he heard uh, Stephen say, Father, do not uh, lay this to their fault. They don't know what they're doing. And that testimony of Stephen and other Christians that, that died, that were persecuted and were killed by St. Paul and his followers left a definite impression upon him. And the Lord God got a hold of him. He gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and he became not no longer an assassin, but an apostle. An apostle he who was sent to speak the good news. We are sent to speak the good news. It says in uh, Matthew 12, 34, it says, for out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. What is in your heart? What is in your personality? It's not talking about the physical heart. You can't believe with your physical heart anymore. You can believe with your physical hand. It's talking about your inner, your personality, who you are, how, how you look at the world, how you look at people. See, out of the abundance of your, of your heart, you will speak. And you want to see someone, if they have faith or not, again, words are locators, look at them during a time of crises. During a time of crises, people will really speak what they have in their heart. And that's how you look at how you can help them. It says uh, uh, in Proverbs 6, 2, another important scripture, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken captive by the words of your mouth. So our words set forth either uh, a blessing, right? And it holds us and we can bless people or our words, right? You think about the words that you say to people. If you're unkind, you're sarcastic, uh, you're, you're prideful. See, how does that affect people? How does that affect people's faces? Very important to understand those things. Because again, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You know, it's not our enemies, you know, people coming against us. It's the enemy behind the scenes, Satan, manipulating people, speaking trash in their minds, right? Putting doubt and fear in their hearts. And they act accordingly. They're acting according to what they're listening to. So when we talk about our confession, it's very important to understand that our confession locates us. It fixes us on what we believe, what we confess, what we talk about. Remember, we're talking about thinking. Now we're talking about speaking. What we speak, okay, fixes us. It, it locates us in our lives how we are going to live. Uh, our confession should be centered around several different things. The first thing is what God has done for us in Christ. What God the Father, Papa God, has done for us in Christ, okay? Um, the second thing is what God has done through his word and his spirit in us, okay? And then what God, uh, the Father in Christ, that we are his beloved and we have his love and we can love, Romans 5.5. 5. And fourth, that what God has done through us or what the word will do through our lips, uh, preaching the word is setting captives free. Mark 16, uh, 15 and 18, we are more than conquerors, Romans 8.37. So, as we speak the word of God, we're locating ourselves. As we speak the Lord of God, it fixes us on what we should believe. See, as we speak the word of God, as we say, you know, people say, well, you know, uh, a lot of Christians don't want to say that they're Christians. A lot of Christians don't want to share faith, maybe because they don't have faith. Maybe they're always living in doubt. You know, I, I say to people, when's the last time you led someone to Christ? Oh, I, I don't know, it's been years. Well, why? If you have the fountain of life within you and God has commanded you to go forth and preach the gospel, why aren't you obedient? See? But again, it's the way you think. Christians and the people of the world have swallowed the lie of the enemy that we can't do anything. We're stupid. We're ignorant. You know, how many times people tell me as a Christian... And I have 20 years of university training on different topics. And they say, well, you're just very, very ignorant to believe that the word of God is, uh, is true. 
And I tell them, if you look at your life, which is falling apart, your marriage, your children, uh, you know, the problems you're having, the diseases that are coming upon you, the tragedies, you, 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 you look at your life and you look at my life and I'm living in victory. Who's the fool? Who's being deceived? See? And Satan is very good at that. And we need to understand that. That as you're obedient to the Lord God and putting his word into action, you will be blessed. You will move forward. There will be attacks. Satan will attack you and attack you and attack you. He does me. He does my family, children, my wife. He attacks us. Grandchildren, he attacks. But we need to stand strong. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Don't give in. And where does it start? Once again, in the head. How you think is how you will speak. And how you speak is how you will live, how you believe. So it's very important to understand those things, okay? Let's go on to the next one. Speaking a positive confession. Let's open up to Romans um, chapter 10, 9 and 10. And it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, and even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that the word of faith... It's in, thy, it's in thy mouth and in thy heart, you know, in your, in your who you are. That is the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto right living, unto righteousness, right before God, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, unto healing, unto deliverance. The mouth is made, the mouth, the, uh, with the mouth confession is made unto all those things. Because salvation means deliverance. Salvation means healing. Salvation means correct living, understanding, um, walking in the divine knowledge of God. That's all salvation, God pulling us out of the darkness. I love Colossians uh, uh, chapter 1, uh, 13 and 14. It says, God has taken out us out of the power of the kingdom of darkness and put him in, put us into the son of in, into the kingdom of his dear son. He has broken Satan, but you need to walk in that. See, that was done at Calvary, but in order for you to experience it, you must believe it, you must speak it, and you must live it. A lot of people do not have; they have scriptures, but they're not putting the scriptures to use. Again, every thought, positive or negative, that comes into your head that is not spoken dies unborn. So when Satan hits you with, an, with, a, with a, 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 a bad idea and it just sits there and boils and boils and you don't get rid of it, right? If you don't get rid of it, it's going to haunt you and haunt you and haunt you. And basically, uh, you, you give in and you speak it, see? And many examples in your life, you understand that. I remember one time I was getting very, very dizzy. And I used this example before, very dizzy. And, uh, and I kept confessing the word of God and confessing the word of God and, and uh, thanking God. And, and uh, one time uh, after breakfast, you know, um, we took a little bit of time to read some scripture and pray, had breakfast. And I said, you know, babe, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, and she said, okay, go ahead and lay down. And I'm laying down in bed. And, uh, you know, the dizziness hit me again. And I said, thank you, Lord God, that you have healed me. Immediately, the Spirit of God hit me. He said, if I have healed you, if you receive that healing, why are you still in bed? At 10 o'clock in the morning, you should not be in bed. You should get up and do what you do. So I got up, immediately got up, put my shoes on, uh, you know, got dressed, went outside and started to work out. If I wouldn't have done that, if I wasn't putting that faith into action, I'd still to this day be experiencing, uh, you know, all kinds of different problems. You know, I'm 71 years old, and I don't take any medication. I don't have any high blood pressure. I don't have any sugar diabetes. But I see people that are 40 years old, and their life is a complete disaster. They eat wrong. They live wrong. They think wrong. And then they wonder why, you know, they have all these different things going on, right? And they want to blame God. Well, you know, if God was so powerful, he would heal me. God did heal you on the cross of Calvary. That was done. That was done in a point of time. The redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you and I must receive that. We must receive that. We must c consider it done and walk and talk as it is done. Consider this. Consider the word of God. Speak the word of God and live the word of God. It was done. 
He's not going to heal you again. He's not going to go to the cross again. He's not going to save you again. You have to take hold of what God has given you and be born again. He's not going to go to the cross. A lot of people think, and there's a lot of traditions out there, that if, uh, 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 you know, uh, when a person comes to Christ or, or goes to communion and things like that, Christ is being crucified again, and they're eating his flesh and his blood. Well, that's ridiculous. How can you eat God? It's a memorial of what he's done for us. If you can eat God, you're bigger than God. So why use God if you're bigger than God? But again, remember that people walk in darkness, and we are the light. One time a, a friend of mine said to me, he was a former supervisor at the university, he says, Dr. Tim, don't you ever rest? And I said, you know what? We are living in darkness, and this is the time uh, this is the time for the light to move. But the door soon will close. And when it will close, there will be no more light. So as darkness is encroaching upon every part of the world, upon in families, uh, upon governments and cities and towns, through a lot of different uh, social media and things like that, talking a lot of garbage and pornography and a lot of different violence that you see all the time. It's encroaching, it's encroaching, and it's embedding in people's lives, and they don't, they don't fight it. They accept it. Well, that's just the way it is. No, that's not the way it is. You can have a victorious uh, life in Christ Jesus. So uh, here's another scripture in Hebrews 3.1. 3, it says, uh, Therefore, holy brothers... Sharers in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. Okay? So obviously there's a lot of people that weren't considering Jesus as their all in all. Christ must be number one in your life. If Christ is not number one, you won't be able to love your wife or your children like you should. If Christ is not number one, you won't live a victorious life. You won't be able to see people healed, delivered from demonic uh, oppression and possession. You won't be able to do anything because everything else is before your uh, uh, priority that is in Christ. You, Christ must be number one. Can't be anything else. He is the rock of our foundation. As Christ is number one in your life, you will see everything else fall in place. When Christ is not number one in your life, the ruin of your family will be great. The ruin of your life will be great. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking having an intimate relationship with God through Christ Jesus and obeying his word, doing his word. Another one. Therefore, we're in Hebrews 4.14. Therefore, because we have such a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Why hold fast? Well, when the enemy attacks, the enemy attacks, you've got to hold fast. You've got to resist. You've got to stand your ground and say, no, Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will not think this way. I will not speak this way. I will not live this way. As Jesus is, so are we. It says in 1 John chapter 4, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Well, Jesus doesn't have the flu. He doesn't have COVID. He doesn't have any other type of disease. He's not depressed. He doesn't have anxiety. He's not suicidal. As Jesus is, so are we to be in this world. We are to be the light. And when people see us, they should see Jesus. I know sometimes I have failed. And they don't see Jesus. And sometimes they see my impatience or my anger. And I ask God for forgiveness. And if I can, I ask the person for forgiveness. But we need to understand that we are the light, the light of the world. As we hold on to Jesus, our high priest, we must hold on. And hold on means to tightly hold on to everything that, that Jesus says we are and we, we can do in him. Uh, let's, let us hold fast, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. Listen again to the teaching, double-minded. For the one who is promised is faithful. The one who promised is faithful. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to say yes to one person and no to another. It's on faith. How you think is how you speak, and how you speak is how you're going to believe. 
So if you hold on to the word of God and speak the word of God in the middle of all kinds of stuff that's going on, you hold on to your confession. I don't care what doctors are saying. I don't care what, uh, you know, big uh, governments are saying. I don't care what your neighbor is saying. I don't care what your family is saying. Think of what Jesus is saying. Look at his word. Understand his word. And the last one, because this is going to be just chapter, uh, I guess, uh, part one of this. It says, I pray in Philemon 6. I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective, workable, ongoing in the knowledge of every good thing that is in us by Christ Jesus. It's effective through the knowledge that you have in the word of God of every good thing. I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things in Christ. I speak the revelations of God. I speak the word of God. I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall be healed. I can cast out demons in the name of Jesus. I can be a blessing and not a cursing. See, you hold on to those confessions. Even when you're being attacked and everybody gets attacked, everybody gets attacked every day with a lot of different things, how are you responding? Are you crying and whining? Some people, when their microwave breaks down, they think it's the end of the world. It's the great tribulation. Come on now. We are living in perilous times, and you need, to, you need to stand up for the Lord God. And you need to stand there and, and stand your ground and be a light in this very dark world. That's what God wants. Let's take a time to pray. This is part one. We'll make it part one. Let's take a time to pray together. So you can stand your ground and understand that uh, the Lord God uh, wants you to, to walk in, in his divine power. Um, if you haven't known the Lord Jesus Christ, please accept him with me uh, this afternoon. And uh, Christian, uh, repent because you're supposed to be the light. Not a crybaby, not a crybaby, but a warrior for Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you. We thank you and praise you and give you all the glory and honor for your love. And Lord God, we thank you for the redemptive work in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that Jesus died for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord God, that because of him, because of what we have in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. For those who don't know the Lord God, say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Lord God, I give everything uh, of me to you. I repent, and I ask you to come into my life and make me anew. Christian, repent. Repent and do your job as God has called you to do on this world. We are the light. We are the eyes, the hands, the mind, the feet of Christ. Repent and do your work. If you want to see Jesus come back soon, do your work. Win souls. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have heard our prayers. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. You know, we have a new webpage called HarvestEvangelisticAssociation.com. I invite you to look at it. We have some testimonies on there. Uh, you can see the statement of faith. You can see what uh, the ministry is doing. We're doing a lot of counseling of people, working with people, doing Bible studies as the Lord opens the door. If, uh, you know, your pastor or wherever you attend, uh, let him listen to this, uh, this uh, tape. Uh, let him uh, decide if he would like us to come and visit because we're more than happy to visit. We have a, a field ministry. We go to different churches and, and work with uh, the, you know, the leadership as well as people. Thank you so much, and may God richly bless you. In his name, amen.